What is the secret to staying youthful? Find out right after this. Hello, everyone, and welcome to my YouTube channel. This is Yoel Farkas. So glad to have you. We are going through the landmark classic book, The Power of Your Subconscious Mind by Joseph Murphy. The purposes of these videos is to get some bite-sized takeaways to apply to our daily lives. So without further ado, let's jump right in. We're up to chapter 20, how to stay young in spirit forever. Murphy starts out the chapter by saying that our subconscious mind never grows old. It is timeless, ageless, and endless. It's part of the universal mind. I particularly like that reference to the universal mind. I'm actually reading in addition to other personal development books, this book, The Master Key System by Charles Hanel, and it talks a lot about the universal mind. So we'll get into that in a future video series. In fact, this may be the next one on the list. I have to decide still. But the point is, is that the universal mind is infinite and our subconscious is what's connected to the universal mind. It's, I'm not gonna get into that now in this video. Again, we'll get into that in the future. But the point is, is that the subconscious is really part of an ever connecting universe and therefore it's ageless and it's timeless. And Murphy says that you can generate youth by tapping into the fact that our subconscious has patience, kindness, harmony, and all that stuff never grows old. Those are timeless classics, if you will, just like Murphy's book. It's a timeless classic. So our subconscious mind is a timeless classic. Now, what Murphy says is, is that what causes old age, it's not the actual aging itself in terms of years or time passing by. It's actually our attitudes towards age. It's that fear of aging that makes us grow old, especially before our time. Okay, and that's what causes the harmful effects on the mind and the body. So it's really like everything else, it's our subconscious attitude, not even our subconscious, also our conscience. But when we have a conscious attitude towards something, it trickles down into our subconscious, as we talked about in many videos before, especially the last video. So as we have that subconscious or even conscious approach to aging and that fear of aging, that's what really makes us grow old. It's not actually something that would happen, but for our attitude towards aging and that fear of aging. And we see, again, we talked about fear in the previous video. Fear is a killer, a huge killer. And to be clear, by the way, it's not that we can ever not have fear. Having fear is natural, but it's our approach to what we do with that fear. And again, we went through that in the previous video, part 17, you can check that out. But the point is, is that it's that fear of aging that really contributes to premature aging. Now Murphy discusses this in a case in point of a friend of his who he called up who was in his 80s and he was just old and bitter and complaining about life passing by and then it comes to an end and all this sort of negative energy and a negative attitude towards things and indeed the man was sick and he was aged and Murphy says everything was because of the way he approached old age, the way he looked at aging. He quite likely had that attitude towards age even from a young age realizing that we all grow old at some point. But again, growing old is just a year's thing. If we have that fear and that attitude towards age as a negative thing, as this man did, then that's what happens. He, he manifested that. So what you really have to do is you have to believe that age is just a number. It's just a number of years, but that in our subconscious, in our minds, we can be as youthful as we choose to be. And that's something you have to believe. Okay, we talked about it in a lot of videos. Belief is so crucial for these things, for impressing things upon our subconscious mind. We have to have that belief. You must believe it. And the way you can do that is by affirmations, and I'll get into very soon. And Murphy, by the way, he proves his theory in terms of everything being rooted in the subconscious mind. If you think about it, we know, especially, he said this back when he wrote the book a long, long time ago, but even nowadays we know that the subconscious can travel. You know, there's past life regression, for example. So we can be sitting in the same room, but our subconscious mind can travel back in time. Or there's cases where people's subconsciouses take them even into the future. Okay, there was a whole FBI unit. It's called, there's a book that I read called Psychic Warriors by David Morehouse that talks about people that are reading into the future by tapping into their subconscious mind. And so therefore we know that the subconscious is timeless. The fact that it could go backwards or forwards or be in the present, means that it's a timeless thing. It's just our bodies that age, but not our subconscious. Another example, by the way, is the famous book 
by Elizabeth Kubler-Ross called Life After Death. So we, we know a lot of people that have had near-death experiences. So for those who don't know, let's say there's people that have gotten into car accidents where they've been clinically dead, they've been on the operating table, they've been pronounced dead, then they come back to life. And they, they report all sorts of things that happened while they were clinically dead, okay? So again, the subconscious never really dies. It's our body that dies, but ultimately the subconscious is a timeless, uh, timeless vehicle. And he also compares the whole idea of subconscious uh, life towards electricity. So we know that electricity is there. It works. As you know, there, there's a light on. You can see right now as I record this video, that's being done through electricity. And just like we can't see what's causing electricity, it's a combination of atoms and molecules and all sorts of things. I'm not a scientist. I'm not going to pretend to be. But the point is, is that the fact that we know that electricity is there, so too the same thing with the subconscious. It's always there. It's always producing. There's always life. It's always happening. Even when we're sleeping, we've talked about the fact that our vital organs are working. Our blood is pumping. So the subconscious is always there and it doesn't age. It's a timeless. Murphy quotes from Ralph Waldo Emerson. He's quoted a lot in this book and he's quoted all over the world. He was a wonderful poet, Ralph Waldo and philosopher. Ralph Waldo Emerson says, we do not count a man's years until he has nothing else to count. I'll say that again. We do not count a man's years. I would say a woman's too. We do not count a man's or a woman's years until they have nothing else to count. That's a very profound statement that Emerson makes, which means that age is really in the mind. It's a matter of what we do with that age. So if we stop counting, then yes, we've aged and we've died. But when we don't stop counting, we live our lives and we take life by the horn, so to speak, then we remain timeless and youthful. And Murphy says that you are as young as you think you are. And he has an example of a friend of his who was a surgeon operating well into his 80s. This was an, a surgeon operating in his 80s. And he would say, I feel young. I act young. I, I'm full of energy. I'm full of enthusiasm. And why not? Right? You could say, why? Why not? The youthfulness is really something of the mind. Same thing with gray hair. You know, I don't know if you could see in this video. Yeah, you probably can. I'm graying at the temples over here. I actually enjoy it because when I was younger, uh, I kind of never liked when people would say, you, know, you look so young, you don't look like you're, you know, well now, even now people say, you don't look like you're 41 years old. But Murphy says your gray hairs are actually an asset because gray hairs come to signify wisdom and experience, that life experience that age brings. So don't look at gray hair or any sort of outward sign of aging as a negative thing. If anything, it's showing your experience, your life experience and your wisdom that's come with time. So therefore gray hair, as he says specifically, should be used as an asset. It is an asset. And Murphy talks a lot in the book, I won't get into it, somewhat political if you ask me, he talks about having these age restrictions. You know, I know in the National Hockey League, for example, I'm not trying to beat up on the National Hockey League on the NHL, I'm a Canadian, I'm a big hockey fan, but I know there was a bit of a, an issue when they were forcing referees to retire at a certain age. I understand their, uh, their basis for doing it. They would argue that the referees weren't as quick or whatever. But I remember one referee, Kerry Fraser, for example, uh, I remember him saying that he felt just as youthful as he did uh, back when he first started as a referee in his early 20s. I think it was in his early 20s. And he talks about that a lot, Murphy, in his book, that you know, forcing people into retirement and saying what somebody can, can or cannot do just based on age should not be the case. And Murphy is very much against mandatory retirement. But again, that's more political. I'm not going to get into that because these videos are about personal development, not politics. By the way, Murphy also says, don't mistake youthfulness for how much exercise you can do or the fact that you can surf with a younger person or that you can do this or you can do that. It's not about your physical fitness. Obviously, it's great. It's great to be fit. It's great to do things that are good for your body. But at the end of the day, in terms of youthfulness, that's a mindset. That's what we think in our mind, in our subconscious mind. It's not about what we can physically do. So even if the body is breaking down, if we feel and we believe ourselves to be youthful in our minds, that's what matters the most. It's a mindset. Talked about this before, but Murphy says it again to emphasize the point that when you fear old age, that's what you manifest. We've talked about that in all the previous video, not all, but many of the previous videos. That which you focus on and that which you fear is what ends up being manifested. So if you have a fear of old age and that's what you concentrate on, then you're going to manifest that bad feeling of old age. So concentrate on the wisdom and the experience that old age brings, and then you'll continue to feel youthful into your old age. The other thing that's very interesting to note that Murphy says is that we've talked about contribution. You can contribute more 
as somebody who's more advanced in age, because again, you bring that experience and wisdom with you. So if you've been looking to contribute, as time passes on, you can contribute more and more. Even now, I'm not old by any stretch of the imagination, nor do I feel old. I'm 41 years old. At the same time, I know that with time, I'm able to contribute in ways I never could before because of the life experiences that I've had. Murphy talks about retirement. I've heard this a lot. There's a lot of people that retire and then within a short period after they, they die, <laughs> for lack of a better way of saying it, they pass away, I guess it's a nicer way to say it because they don't exercise their minds anymore. When they retire, they retire their minds. And Murphy says, don't make that mistake. So there's nothing wrong with retiring. It's excellent to retire, but he says, find a hobby, find a passion. You could even start a new career. There's all sorts of things that people can do when they retire. The main thing is to make sure your mind is still active. And again, part of that is feeling that energy. So when your mind is active and you feel that energy and enthusiasm for whatever you're doing, he talks about somebody that got into wildlife photography. I have a friend who volunteers for the hospital. He was a pharmacist and now he volunteers as a pharmacist for the hospital in his retirement. There's all sorts of things you can do to exercise that mind and really develop passion and energy and enthusiasm regardless of your age. Murphy says, a firm life. So I talked about affirmation before. Murphy talks about it a lot in this book. A firm life, rather than fear death, a firm life. He talks about accomplishments that many people in their old age have had. So there's Herbert Hoover, the former US president. He said he had interviewed him in his 80s. He was dictating to his assistants. He was writing books. He was accomplishing all sorts of things well into his 80s. And he was saying how much he felt great about life. Okay, another example is his, his own father, Murphy's own father, he said, learned a new language in his 60s, I, maybe even his 70s, he learned to speak another language. And then there's Michelangelo, the famous artist was creating masterpieces into his 80s. So that didn't stop him from being creative and actually even doing the art, which takes motor skills, even in his 80s. So never, never view yourself as being old, affirm life, and you'll remain youthful as long as you keep that mindset. Keep the mindset of youth. That concludes chapter 20, how to stay young in spirit forever. Really enjoyed this one. Hope you did as well. And so grateful to have you. I will see you at the next video. Hey everyone, hope you enjoyed that video. If you haven't already, please hit that subscribe button over there in the middle. Please leave a comment below. I'd love to hear your feedback. You can email me, yoel at yoelfarkas.com, Y-O-E-L at Y-O-E-L-F-A-R-K-A-S.com. If you missed the previous video in this series, you can see that at the top corner over there. And for the next video in this series, click down below. Have a great day.